Hi, let us talk today about the world of energy because energy is everything and energy is everywhere. Where I live in, it's called Delhi and in Delhi it is in India and India is on earth and earth is in the world and the world is in the universe. So me and you, whether you are from New York or you are from Sydney or you are from Cairo or you are from Beijing, practically share one half of the same address. We all live on earth, we all live in the world and we all live in this broad universe. Have you ever wondered why is the universe called the universe? Why not Uniprose, prose probably because the world is so beautiful and pros will never be able to catch the beauty which poetry carries no matter how many words you have if you put it in a verse they create certain wonders which goes beyond the meaning of the words and why is not a universe called a multiverse why is there this this prefix called uni. Uni means one. So somehow there is an indication that me and you are connected. Everything is connected. What is this connection? This connection in common parlance is called empathy and in the scientific world it is called the phenomena of resonance. You cut any damn tree on the earth, whether the tree is in Africa or in Asia or in South America, North America, Australasia, wherever it is, just pick a tree, cut the tree from the trunk and then you will find there are rings. The the trunk of the tree, it will contain a lot of rings. The rings will indicate the age of the tree. So if there are 10 rings, the tree is 10 years old. If there are 20 rings, the tree is 20 years old. Now what is a year or what is an age? Age is counted in years and years is nothing but the round of the earth around the sun. So all it means is that since the tree has been there, the earth has revolved 10 times around the sun. And not only this, those particular rings will also give information about the weather or about the weather of that particular year because if the ring is uh, is very thin it will indicate that the weather that year had been dry and cold however if the ring is thicker in size it would indicate that the weather of that year had been hot and humid So if all the trees in the world register what is happening in the celestial world, if whatever is happening in the celestial world is registered somehow in this terrestrial world, then don't you think that there is some kind of a connection between what happens there and what happens here? And if there is a connection between what happens there and what happens here, then there might be some connection between what happens in Asia to what's happening in Africa to what happens in South America, etc. I am reminded of an old story, a real story of a, a famous Bengali saint called Ram Krishna Paramhans. He lived in the 19th century and uh, in one of the books, mm, uh, it is mentioned that at one time he was... Uh, crossing the Hooghly River on a boat along with a few of his disciples. And suddenly he began to shout, don't beat me, don't beat me, don't beat me. And he began to even cry. So the disciples who were sitting beside him, they got panicky. And they felt a little embarrassed as well because there was nobody beating him. So they started whispering in one another's ears and they said, Look what Guruji is doing. I don't understand what this man is up to. Nobody is saying anything to him. So one of the disciples could gather the courage and he spoke to Ramakrishna Paramhans and he said, Guruji, nobody is here except of us and you are absolutely fine. I don't understand. Why are you shouting? So to this, Ramakrishna responded, let's see towards my back. And when the disciple saw the back of Ram Krishna Paramhans, it was all wounded. 
it carried a lot of wound, wound marks as if somebody had uh, beaten him with a whip. After some time, when the boat reached to its destination, the disciples saw that there was a man being beaten by three other people with whips and his back carried almost the same kind of wounds which were being carried by Ram Krishna Paramhans on his back. This is an actual example of empathy. Empathy basically means feeling like the other. It is not sympathy. Sympathy is feeling, uh, is feeling, okay, there is a difference between the word sympathy and empathy. When you feel for someone, it is sympathy and when you feel like someone, it is empathy. So let's take an example. Your friend's daughter fell and broke her feet. So you sympathize with her. You feel for her. However, if your own daughter fell and breaks her feet, then you actually feel the pain and that is what empathy is all about. Because pathy means feeling and M means similar, empathy, similar feeling. And just today morning, I received a call from a Gujarati woman and he, she wanted to join this particular Reiki group. She requested me and she also told me that back in 1986, she was first introduced to the world of Reiki. She finished the first and the second level and somehow then she could not continue with Reiki because of some experiences which she had. She told me that uh, when she was curing people with the help of Reiki, suddenly she would develop similar pains in her own body. Now, this has nothing to do with Reiki. The problem is that she had some kind of phenomena um, uh, in the world of empathy. It is very common to find and I even told her the kind of combinations which would be present in her birth chart, which would lead to this kind of a phenomena. So I hope that uh, by now she is also in our group. But this is something which gives us an indication that somehow in this world we have stronger connections. We live in a world which is uni-verse and not a multi-verse. In, in the Hindu philosophy, We have a separate school called Advat. A is a negative prefix and Dvat means two. So the philosophy essentially says that there is nothing which is dual. There is no duality in the world. Everything is just one. So somehow in this incredible universe, we all are connected in an awe-inspiring way. And that is why it is called a universe. Now, in Mumbai and in Montreal, there was a tradition of uh, taking protection money from people. So protection money was given to gangsters. Back in the olden days, in China, people also used to give protection money. But in China, the protection money wasn't given to gangsters, but it was given to doctors. Yes. Doctors, my friends. Why? Because it was the duty of the doctor to say that we don't catch a disease. It was the duty of the doctor to catch the disease before it manifests in the body. Perhaps they had a mechanism in which they could catch the disease before it started to manifest in the body and the world couldn't understand this particular tradition until a Russian scientist, Semyon Davidovich Kirlian, came out with something known as Corona Discharge, which even Nikola Tesla uh, uh, was talking about in his works, which later came to be known as Kirlian Photography, which in the religion or in the, in the spiritual field is called Aura. So if you see the photograph of Jesus Christ or Guru Nanak or Shivji, then you'll see that behind their head, There is this brightness, something bright here, everywhere. That is aura. So we'll talk about aura some other time. But all I'm trying to figure out, or all I'm trying to say is that there was a mechanism 
whereby the diseases could be caught and could be rectified even before they had caught the physical body. And our scriptures talk about three kinds of bodies. When I say our scriptures, I mean to say the Hindu scriptures. They talk about the gross body or the, the sthul sharir, the shukshma body. And the sukshma body is, uh, you can say, um, the subliminal body. And then the karam sharir or the causal body. So there are some diseases which belong to the gross body. So if you uh, treat those diseases, they can easily be solved. But then there are some other diseases which do not belong to the gross body. Now, to solve those diseases which don't belong to the gross body, using your senses or your knowledge about the gross body does not help. And largely, this was this thought was responsible to, uh, to give birth to psychology. Because there were some physicians and they were baffled by diseases like paralysis and asthma because they could not find any organic cause behind these diseases. To solve a disease and to manage a disease is altogether a different ball game. So if I am having an asthmatic attack and I do a spray in my mouth and somehow I can breathe correctly for a certain period of time, I am just trying to manage my problem. But I will again suffer from an uh, asthmatic attack uh, next year or whenever I face the same weather. So it does not get rid of the problem for me. So some diseases belong to the body, some diseases belong to the mind. Similarly, some diseases belong to the gross body and some to the more subtler bodies. What we have to understand, if we have to understand the world of energy, if we have to understand the world of Reiki, if we have to understand anything, anything in the world of energy, then we have to understand one basic fundamental fact that we are more than our physical body. If we can understand that, then we can enter the world of energy and if we can enter the world of energy, then we can enter the world of Reiki. Reality as we know is limited by our senses. I seem to, I seem to you as a person who is wearing a coat because you can see me. I seem to you as a knowledgeable person because you can hear me speak a, a coherent speech. And your perception creates the reality for you. We already have a cognitive bias. You try to perceive in a particular way which might be real and might not be real. Okay, I'll give you an example of two parallel lines which was given by uh, Mueller and Lyer a uh, few decades ago. Now here, I'll draw two lines and let's see and try to figure out which out of these two lines is the bigger line. Alright, so here we have line number one. I write L1 and I draw this line and then we have a line 2 and this is line 2. Now you see these two lines and tell me which line is lengthier and which one is shorter. Around 99% of you would, would feel as if L1 is longer than L2. However, if you see carefully, then lines 1 and 2 are equal. However, we have a cognitive bias and we perceive things this way. All of us do. Moreover, moreover our senses are limited in their features. For example, uh, you have an iPhone 6 and then you have an iPhone 7 and then newer versions. You had Windows 7, Windows 8 and then Windows 10. So similarly, various species have different kind of mind levels. Now, 
we also have certain thresholds. For example, we can listen from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. But an eagle can see far more than what we can see. A dog can smell far more than what we can smell. Sometimes when people go, we can't even smell what the what was the odor which they were carrying. But a dog can. A deer can hear more than what we can hear. Okay, let's take an example. Now, this is a rubber band. And if I drop this rubber band, it would have definitely made some voice. Now, did you hear the sound made by the rubber band? No, you didn't. Because it was not perceptible by our senses. So I once did an experiment. In New Delhi where I live, there's a place called Hoskos. In Hoskos, there's a deer park. So I went to the deer park and I then I, I, I wanted to touch the deer. So I slowly, very slowly, without making any kind of noise, I tried to reach the deer. But the moment I was quite near to the deer, the deer just ran away. I made sure I was not making noise by my foot, but perhaps the deer could listen to the less noise which, which was not perceptible by my ears. So the reality which I see is bound by the threshold or the limens or the power of my senses. If I see this pen through my naked eye, it looks different to me. If I see this through a binocular, it's different. Through a magnifying glass, it's different. If I see it through a telescope, I can even see moon through a telescope. If I see through a microscope, it will look quite different to me. If I see myself through an x-ray, I will look quite different to me myself. And if I look in my stomach through a gastroscope, <laughs> it will give me a very different view. So the, the point is, what seems a pen to me or what seems a body to me would seem very different to my eyes in case I use the power of an x-ray or the power of a microscope or the power of a gastroscope. So the reality would differ according to my senses. This is the first point to be understood. So these physicists, they wanted to find out what reality is. Now the word physics comes from a Latin root called physica or a Greek root called physica, which means natural things. And this physica is again based on a root called physis, which means nature. Perhaps the first physicists wanted to study nature. What is nature all about? And every religion used to say that Lord is everywhere. Lord is omnipresent. So when they say Lord is omnipresent, a physicist said, oh, I want to check it. If the Lord is everywhere, then it should be present in everything which we can see. So if we can see this pen, if we can see this microphone, if we can see this tie, if we can see this, then if we can see this marker, then let us break everything down. And if we break everything down, and what we can find is something similar, then we can believe that probably God is everywhere or at least everything shares something common. So they tried to break everything and the smallest particle which they reached onto, which they couldn't break further, they named it atom. And very rightly so. Why? Because star means to cut and A is a negative prefix. So atom or atom is something which you can't further cut down. So then was the first confluence of religion and science or traditional wisdom and at that particular time modern science. Then in around 1895 they were able to break down this so-called unbreakable part called atom into three constituents which they called electron, proton 
and neutron. What is known in Christianity as the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And in Hinduism, it is called Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the maintainer and Shiva, the destroyer. And I am reminded of a very famous book called The Tao of Physics, written by uh, Fritjof Capra in 1975. He was a physicist who was born in Austria and then moved on to America. And it is a wonderful book which draws these kind of parallels between traditional wisdom and the then modern science. This was the second confluence of uh, the science of those times with the traditional wisdom. So now the scientists had some common things which are present in each and everything which we can look around and also that everything is made up of three different kind of particles. However, this understanding was bound to change because in 1925 what was born was something called quantum physics. The physicists even went beyond the world of electrons, protons and neutrons. They wanted to find out what are these electrons, protons and neutrons made up of. But they were astonished to find that they were not made up of anything physical. Once they started breaking them, all they could find was energy fields or energy vortices or you can say energy which was spinning in the shape of a tornado. Either you can see from this angle or the same thing see from side angle which appear like this. And if you can see any graph or any spiral movement or a sine wave, it is almost the same. Now can you drive a car through a tornado? No, you, you can't. You can, but then it will start flying and it will go, go, go somewhere else because there is a force. Although you can see a lot of dust because the dust is there and the wind would carry it along with it. But even if the dust wasn't there and if a tornado comes, you will not be able to see it, but it will be a force to reckon with. And if you drive your car through again, you will feel the force. You will feel the resistance. So atoms, the smallest little particles, which are the same in everything which we can see around us, divided into three things, protons, neutrons and electrons. And then suddenly the physical comes to the non-physical, to the energy world and we find energy vortices or the energy fields just like tornadoes. So quantum physics changed the world view of the scientists. Every atom was nothing but energy vibrating at a particular speed. You are there in the world of energy. But when the light beams, matter, see, is just an illusion of energy and light. When the light beams through you, the light comes and it beams off, then you can see me. But if I close down the light, you can't even see me. I am energy. And because of energy, there is some matter and that matter is only an illusion of energy and light. And our traditional ancestors used to call this Maya Jal. Or Maya means illusion and Jal means a web. So a web of illusion. There isn't anything physical. Or you can say that we live in an energy, an, an energy filled world which gives rise to manifestation of the physical world. Einstein said that this energy field which I was talking to you about is the sole governing agency of any particle or any matter. Now in spirituality this particular energy field is called spirit. Now to understand this let's take the example of a mobile phone and the network which it catches. Now, sometime it might so happen that a mobile phone might break. If the mobile phone breaks, you can no longer receive the signal. However, 
you can bring in a new mobile phone and then if you on it and if it has the same receptor receptor means in this particular case a sim card then it will again start receiving the signal and that is precisely what in the spiritual realm is called reincarnation you are the signal the body is the mobile you might be blessed with a black or a white body a tall or a short body a fat or a thin body or you might be a male or a female doesn't really matter but your biology is just the expression of that particular matter which was shaped by uh, the energy or the field which exists whether you are there or not there the energy still is there whether the mobile phone had been broken or not the energy the signal was still there the cells in the body respond to that particular signal however everybody has a different frequency everybody logs on to the same source the paramatma or the god and we try to catch in a part of that energy and we have that specific signal so everyone is different but it accesses the same source that is we part of the signal or part of the field we try to catch and if somehow if somehow there can be an embryo with the same set of self receptors or receivers then you can be back online after death yes this is a thought on which research is going on and michael jackson knew this and that is why he spent a lot of money and told the people that after his death his body should be preserved because he knew about this and he thought perhaps in the next 200 to 250 years science will reach a destination where getting alive in the same body would probably become possible however destiny had a role the intention of the lord or the destiny whatever you might call it was such that his body was not in a shape to be preserved and therefore his will could not be executed even the buddhist have a tradition where they name their next lama or their next leader hundreds of years ago and they tell that there at that point in time that particular person would be born and he will be our leader why because they have this knowledge about the signal rather than being very fussy about the body if you concentrate on the signal then only these kind of miraculous things are possible when we do healing we try to heal the signal we don't try to heal the body we try to heal the signal and the body is receiving the signal and once the body receives that signal it automatically gets healed whether the disease belongs to the body whether the disease belongs to the subtle body whether the disease belongs to this lifetime whether the disease belongs to previous lifetimes whether the disease belongs to this particular age uh, in which a person is or to his childhood anywhere if we concentrate on the signal we can cause the healing for example asthma there is a common understanding that asthma is caused because somehow somewhere a person was very fearful of an incident and therefore whenever in the surroundings that kind of an atmosphere happens the person suffers from a asthmatic attack so about 15 20 years ago i was researching on this particular disease and somebody referred me to uh, the works of l ron hubbard and i went to uh, one of his institutions uh, branches of his institutions uh, it's it was called dianetics and it is quite popular in america so they had this uh, machine a uh, time regression machine and it was very, very expensive and i and it used to regress people and it was used and regression was used to solve these kind of ailments however uh, i had my own tools um, having the knowledge of psychology and regression and having uh, the knowledge of how past life regression is done etc so i tried uh, i i tried my own tools to solve this uh, this ailment however what i am trying to arrive at is that my thinking synchronized with the thinking and of of uh, dianetics founder l ron hubbard because they also thought that if the mind can be taken back 
to that particular point in time where a person suffered, where a person had the initial root or the initial cause of his present suffering, then the cure is possible. The very word Dianetics is based upon two roots. Dia means through and nos means mind. So Dianetics probably means uh, through the mind. When we talk about energy, we talk about the signal which is related to this life as well as to past lives. We are just trying to hit at the root of the problem. So, important thing to realize is that you are not a body who has a soul, but you are a soul who has a body or you are a signal who has a body. And this is our basic understanding. Now, how this understanding is being used in the world of medicine to cure ailments is something which I'll talk to you in the next video. Thank you very much for being with me.